All right, biochem students. All right, today I want to talk about the mechanism of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. Okay, so this is when energy first starts to pay off during the cycle of glycolysis. And so, what we end up with is we start with, uh, well, we, <laughs> well, we end up with what we start with. Anyway, what we start with is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, which is here. It's three carbons one, two, three, and there's the phosphate group there. Uh, you notice on the three carbon is where the phosphate is. And then we're going to have a phosphate group. The other thing that's going to be involved in this reaction, and this is a cofactor, this is N A D positive. Okay, so usually, so what's, we're going to take this and we're going to put this phosphate group onto that carbon. And that's not really thermodynamically something that should happen, right? That's a positive delta G. You're taking the system and you're decreasing the entropy and you're forming new bonds that are probably about the same level. So that's, that's not going to be good. That's a positive delta G. We don't want that. But what does happen is this NAD positive here wants to become NADH. And you can think about this in the world doesn't like to have charges on things. Anytime there's a charge on something, it wants to get rid of that charge. Okay. And we're going to use the coupling of this in the third step. So the first step, what needs to happen is the glyceraldehyde needs to, needs to line up in here. Okay. So I'm going to put this carbon here with its oxygen and its hydrogen. This is the one carbon, okay, that's very important. And then we're gonna have the second carbon with a hydrogen and then the OH group. And then the third carbon with its hydrogen and its hydrogen and its OP, O, O, O. All right, so what happens here is this is cysteine. Okay, cysteine uh, has this sulfur group right here and it's a weak acid, okay? This hydrogen can kind of fall off and right next to it, and this is why this works, is we have a histidine residue. Histidine is a weak base. So this nitrogen with these electrons can come on here and this hydrogen, it's already kind of like this. And there's already this kind of weak hydrogen dipole dipole bond um, that's taking place here. So what happens is this nitrogen is like, hey, you come here and this bond gets broken. And what happens though is keep in mind, there's this oxygen right here. Now, what do you know about oxygen compared to sulfur? Oxygen is more electronegative. So oxygen is more willing to take on a negative charge than sulfur is. And sulfur doesn't really mind that much just because it's so big that having one extra electron out there doesn't really matter. But, so what happens now is sulfur comes in, forms a bond with this carbon, these electrons go up here, and you end up getting this oxygen with a negative charge. So this is our, this is our intermediate structure, okay? So now we've got nitrogen, and it's got this, this proton stuck on here. All right, so now, now what can happen? Now what would be our next logical step? Well, we've got this NAD positive. Okay, and NAD does not like to be positive. So what happens is uh, NAD, now this is a big, big molecule and I'm not gonna draw it on this little tiny board here. It's got a giant ring around there where it pulls up. It comes along and it takes this hydride. Okay, so this hydride goes there and that means it's taking the carbons with it. So if it's gonna take these What's going to happen to that carbon? Remember, if you're going to take these electrons and that hydrogen, this carbon is going to be electron deficient, and it doesn't want to be electron deficient. But luckily for this carbon, this oxygen has a negative charge. And even though it's really electronegative, oxygen doesn't actually want that negative charge. So these electrons come down. That hydrogen disappears. We're going to form NADH. All right, so we've got NADH formed. And then we've got... I'm going to just make this disappear. Make this disappear, make this disappear. Now, now we have is we have carbon double bonded to oxygen, and then it's still bonded to this cysteine group off to the side. But, and eventually this needs to break, right? Because you don't want, you don't want a giant tail sticking on the end of your enzyme, right? And then this is in the exercise. So what's going to happen is phos this, this phosphate group is going to come along here. All right, so we've got phosphorus. And keep in mind, there's a lot of electrons here, right? Phosphate has a negative three charge, and if it's deprotonated right here, yeah, that's a negative three quarter charge, uh, formal charge on each of these oxygens. So these electrons are going to come over and they're going to form a bond with this carbon and this sulfur, because keep in mind this nitrogen here, he's not happy either. He's positive. The sulfur is going to take back its hydrogen. Nitrogen is going to go into the state where it's happy again, no longer has a positive charge. Sulfur reformed its sulfhydryl, so it's happy. And then this carbon has now formed... 1,3-BPG, uh, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. So this molecule here is called 1,3-BPG, uh, otherwise known as 1,3-bis, because it's got two phosphyl groups that aren't next to each other. If it's biphospho, they're next to each other. Bis, 
phos phosphoglycerate. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and let me know what you think about the video. Thank you.